In this video, I am going to give an overview of the LTT Magnetic Cable Management product and all its components and put them, namely the magnets, to the test. I think I have all of the cable management room bottle products arranged in front of me here now. Starting with the smallest, we have cable tie holders and they come with the standard plate set. So they're like small arcs, but a little smaller and they have slots for you to loop cable ties through. The bundle I got, which is the room bundle, comes with two packs of four standard size cable ties and then one pack of four large cable ties. In the bundle itself, stock, comes just the cable tie holders and the standard plate set. And then you can add on the VHB plate set. And the way this differs from the standard plate is that it has a stronger backing adhesive on the plate so that you don't have to worry about screwing in the plate if you want a permanent installation. Although LTT does recommend you screw in anything that you want to be a permanent installation nonetheless. Is he building a computer? I don't know. Doesn't matter. So like cool. It. You don't have to build a computer with the LTT screwdriver. You can do anything. Uh, it's actually when you try to do something else, there's like a burr burr that comes up. It's incompatible. <laughs> you should try it out. Buy one. Test it. <laughs> <laughs> burr burr. Burr burr. Damn it. Then we have the silicon grip set. This is to be installed on the smooth side of the plate, opposite of the adhesive. And it makes sliding the magnet off of the plate more difficult. But it comes at the cost of weakening the magnetic attractive force between the magnet and the plate. And it's a noticeable one at that. And next size up is the small arches, which is for corralling small cables through. Pretty self-explanatory. And it comes with the standard plate set as a default, and of course these are the add-ons. And then a step up from that, we have the medium arches, which is just for larger cables or more cables. Same sort of a deal. And then a step up from that, we have the large or grand arches. And you only get two, because um, apparently they're so big and burly, you only need two. Uh, but my bundle kit, I think I got uh, two packs of them. Yeah, I got two packs of them. Uh, but keep in mind, there is a, a larger version of this that comes with this home bundle that has extra large arches. And then we have the power bar key with the standard plate and VHB and corresponding grip set. And then a power brick holder with the corresponding plates and grips as well. So LTTstore.com sells this product called uh, Banana for Scale. It's a banana plushie, which some of you are big fans of and apparently is all you need for a sense of scale. But I've always heard people are most satisfied with the real deal, not some fake replica. So here's a real banana. In order to give you guys a real sense of scale, there's nothing like the real deal after all, right? Oh my God, so stupid. But to the rest of you, I intend to showcase a little bit of what kind of force it takes to do some very common things around the house. Cut to the montage. The tests were conducted by hand, and for any test harness, I used what comes in the magnetic cable management bundle itself to create any kind of attachment points. You install the cable ties like so. That makes a lot of sense. Cool. It punches in quite easily. Now can I loop it around and have a crisscross to the bottom? I could, I could. I'm gonna have the other one go the other way. Okay. Huh, this could work. Man, Creator Warehouse thinks of everything. They even made it so that LTT cable ties have this little oblong shape to allow for the flattened screw to fit through it so that us reviewers have an easier time in conducting magnetic tests on their products. Man, they think of everything. The reason I do it this way as opposed to creating a custom harness is to make it as simple as possible for others in the community to replicate my tests 
and corroborate my results using the least amount of additional material. If you have any questions or critiques on why I chose to do things the way I did, or thoughts for improvement, please don't hesitate to drop a comment. This is the first time I am conducting any sort of physical test, and as such, I have refined the tests I have conducted over time. I initially started by conducting the cable tie holder and small arch tests by doing five repetitions. But after carrying out a multitude of tests across multiple SKUs, I ended up conducting substantially more than five tests and opted to get rid of outliers so that only the most representative, typical values were retained and represented. All tests were done by hand, so inherently there is some level of inconsistency with a human actor conducting each test. I conscientiously attempted to perform each test as consistently as I could for each SKU, but nonetheless there are still variations in the gathered data, some of which can be explained and others of which can only be attributed to human inconsistency. I know that many magnets tend to lose their magnetism if dropped or subjected to intense force. I did a bit of research myself on if dropping neodymium magnets will adversely affect their magnetic properties and sent an email out to LTT store support and found that no, neodymium magnets wouldn't lose their magnetic properties unless they broke apart or chipped. And I can happily confirm that in my tests, none of the magnets that were flung about in my garage ended up chipping or showed any signs of damage on the magnet itself. I performed two types of tests, a pull directly off the plate in which I pulled the magnet perpendicularly up off the magnetic plate and the slide test in which I slide the magnet off the side of the plate. I performed these tests with each item and with three different surfaces, the grip set, the bare plate, and the included plastic film. Something I failed to initially realize when I first opened the plates is that the non-adhesive side has a thin layer of protective plastic on it. Since I didn't even notice the presence of this thin layer, I didn't peel it off and install the plates under my desk with the protective film on. But because it was something that I missed and ended up using in production, I figured I should include this configuration in the tests, as others are likely to do the same. I quickly realized it does provide some additional benefits beyond just protecting the metallic plate, which can be seen in the following test data. The plastic film laminate that comes on the non-adhesive side of the metallic plate typically provides the most friction and is represented in the graph with the blue line. This is followed by the grip set, represented by the red line, and then lastly we have the bare metal plate, in yellow, which provides the least amount of friction. But the results varied considerably between the SKUs, and I have some theories. The plastic surface makes the cable tie holders considerably harder to slide off the plate by roughly a factor of two compared with both the grip set and bare metal plates. At first glance, this may be a little perplexing, but if you think about it, it starts to make some sense. The plastic layer is extremely thin, reducing the magnetic attraction between magnet and plate very little, while providing a very grippy surface. Compared to the bare metal plate, which allows for a strong magnetic attraction on a metallic smooth surface, I'm not surprised to see the metal plate faring the worst in the slide-off test. But what was surprising was the discovery that the grip set fared only slightly better than the bare metal plate. In order to help provide an explanation for this phenomenon, we will first have to observe general trend data from the pull-off tests. The pull-off tests showed that the metal plate alone offered the most magnetic attractive force with the plate, followed closely by the plastic film, and then the grip set at a distant third. Intuitively, this result makes sense because magnetic attraction weakens the further magnetic objects are placed from each other, and whenever you add a layer, however thin, it increases the distance between those objects. This trend held across all SKUs with a couple anomalies. First, the large arch pull-off test places the plastic surface as requiring slightly more force than the bare metal plate. I suspect this was due to the size of the magnets on the large arches being so large that the reduction in magnetic attraction is negligible, allowing for slight imperfections in my tests to skew the data, allowing for the plastic surface to come out on top. And what's more is that the averages for the extra large arches pull tests for the plastic and bare metal surfaces are really close together, corroborating my theory. Next, the power brick pull-off plate tests has a single outlier. This is due to no excessive tests being conducted due to the flimsy, janky nature of the harness. It was replaced once and then was becoming difficult to get consistent tests with, so I opted to stop at 5 tests, which leaves an extreme outlier which would otherwise be thrown out before being included in the graph. And if you were to throw out this data point, the average lines do show an expected trend. While we're speaking of anomalies, if you look closelier at the slide-off tests, we will notice a few skews break from the norm of plastic film providing the most friction, followed by the grip set, and lastly, the bare metal plate. Looking at the cable tie holder, you can see that the results of the metal plate and grip set surfaces are very close together. The difference between the averages of the two tests is about a quarter of a pound, while that of the medium arch is about a pound and a half. 
I attribute this difference to the size of the magnets combined with the difference in the surface area of the skews. If we plot the results of both tests on one graph, we will notice that the larger skew will have higher values for each surface as expected. Thinking about this conceptually, it makes sense. We have both the magnetic force as well as the surface area of the area in contact increasing, which in combination adds to how much friction will be encountered during the slide-off test. For the small arch tests we see... Oh wait, what? Uh, let me double check the values real fast. So it turns out these values were correctly entered. Um, but out of the interest of due diligence, I'll redo the test as this is kind of suspicious. It's absurd that the plastic film surface and the bare metal plate had almost the exact same average. Uh, yeah, let me, let me get that ready for you real fast. Okay, that's more like it. There's still a peculiarity which can be seen in the numbers of the bare metal plate being 0.6 pounds higher than that of the grip set. And even if I were to salvage the numbers from the initial test and take the average of the grip set, it would still be lower than the metal plate's average by about a tenth of a pound. I'm at a loss as to the reason as to why this is happening. I was initially suspecting that it may be due to the center of gravity of the arches compared to the cable tie holder and where the push was being conducted from. I had a theory that results were lower for the small arches because they tended to pivot more rather than slide off. But looking at the footage, only occasionally do they end up pivoting off and they're sliding off relatively easily. If any of you happen to have a theory or suspicion as to why this is showing up the way it is, please feel free to share in the comments below. Now for the power bar keys we- oh, what the hell? What's up with this crazy slope? Uh, not of an abundance of diligence, I will conduct the metal plate slide off test yet again, if you'll excuse me. Okay, now that the lines are trending in a more horizontal direction, we can see the trends. For the power bar keys, we see that the grip set actually offers the most friction followed by the plastic film, which is trailed distantly by the metal plate. My suspicion is that the grip set overperforms here due to the larger surface area of the plates for the power bar keys. If you notice, the other SKUs all have plates that closely hug the size of the corresponding magnets, but the power bar keys have a larger surface area combined with the push point being closer to the surface, which makes it impossible to pivot them during the test. This all culminates in more friction needed in order to completely slide them off the plate. I would just like to pause for a moment and say I appreciate all the comments you guys leave for me. I do read every single one, even though I may not respond to them all. I came across one asking me to test how well the power bar keys adhere to a magnetic surface while installed on a power bar while misaligned. It was a solid request, and I tested it and found that, as the user had predicted, misaligned power bar keys would still adhere relatively fine magnetically. However, Having them aligned and in contact with the magnetic surface they're mounted on doubles their adhesive strength vertically and laterally. Initially, I tested just the pull-off test on a metallic plate before deciding that a slide-off test ought to be done in addition for comprehensiveness. I would like to point out that the LTT metallic plates appear to have slightly more strength and fare better by a couple more pounds in both aligned and misaligned configurations. So that concludes my analysis. Here are some observations and key takeaways from my tests. 1. The grip set's significant reduction in magnetic attraction to the metallic plate was the reason it fared so poorly in most of the slide-off tests, only performing slightly better than that of the bare metal plate. 2. Sliding the magnet on the grip set can be done any amount of times without damaging the plate surface. 3. Sliding the magnet on the plastic surface can be done a handful of times before the plastic rips and provides less grip benefit. The plastic film is not very durable. 4. Sliding the magnet on the bare metal plate can also be done a handful of times before the plate's paint scratches off and ends up providing less friction. 5. For scenarios in which you will be moving things around frequently, the grip sets are a good purchase as it will provide extra grip for the magnets in the lateral direction and will protect the surface from scratches and scrapes. 6. For set it and forget it use cases, leave the plastic protective film on the surface of the plates. I don't understand what all the obsession is with peeling off plastic and packaging in general, but leaving it on in this case actually adds a substantial amount of grip on the plate at an insignificant hit to the magnetic attractive force in the vertical direction. It actually performs better than the grip sets, but severely lacks durability. In fact, I dare go so far as to say, if you want things to grip well, I don't think there's any noticeable benefit of taking off the plate's plastic protective layer in almost any real world situation. 7. For set it and forget it use cases, with the small arches, 
Don't buy the grip sets to improve grippiness. I would instead advise you to leave the thin plastic film on the plate and be careful about taking the arches off of it. If you are diligent about merely pivoting it off instead of sliding it, I think the plastic film should last for some time. 8. Power bar keys are strong enough to cling to a metallic surface even while misaligned. So there you have it. That concludes my analysis and this video. Hope you guys found it useful and beneficial for your needs. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to drop them in the comment section below. And I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. So I'm here doing some prep and setup the day before my planned shoot and I'm unpacking the product and putting everything out on the desk. And the fact that these products are all black on the outside and only color coded on the inside or from the tabs makes it a little hard to distinguish and discern which is which at a glance. So I'm finding myself getting a little overwhelmed just given the sheer volume of the entire pack, as well as the fact that I need to meticulously read each and every one, which one's a silicon grip set, which one's a VHB plate set, and which one's a standard plate set. If you could color code those with some minor accent colors on the external packaging, like maybe down in the corner or something, or at the bottom, or like a line streaking through with like the color coding of what each set is, that would be super helpful because that would allow me at a glance to know, okay, yeah, this is a silicon grip set. This is a standard plate set and this is a VHB plate. So just some feedback. I mean, the packaging does look slick, but I prefer function over form. And in this case, the form also has some function to it. So just another suggestion, guys. Thanks for being open to hearing suggestions. Metapolate plastic film. That's a good one. So what is it telling you? It's telling me that one is better. In terms of what? What does it actually mean? What does this mean? means it can take more force. Of what? What kind of force? Cable ties. They will, they will stick on better. Okay, mom, but what kind of force? Can you tell from just the labeling of the graph itself? Average 5.8 pounds force. Mom, you really are a bullshitter. Oh my god, it's not even funny. Can you at least try a little harder? You're not a very good bullshitter at all. <laughs> what is this? What is it? It says force in elves. <laughs> Saying force in elves. It says force in elves. <laughs> That's pounds, mom. <laughs> That's what I said. You <laughs> said no, it's elves. 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 Like, oh, elves. <laughs> From your throat, elves. <laughs> <laughs> And then what is?